James here. This is going to be a tutorial on how to get the most out of palettes in Toon Boom Animate. I put my scene settings up at the beginning so that if you wanted to use the same scene your size you could. So first of all we're going to create a couple of layers for the sky and the sun. The sky will be the bottom layer and the sun will be above that because the way the Toon Boom works, a layer on the top is displayed first and so any layer behind it gets cut by the top layer so you want the sun to be seen all the time no matter where it is and for it to go over the top of the sky. I'm going to create a palette just for the sun and the sky. We're going to do this because later on we're going to edit the sun and make it a lot more realistic and we're going to add to the sky and make the sky a nice gradient rather than a flat blue and we're also going to be able to use this palette to clone it and then create a sunset with the same drawing elements and just be able to seamlessly flick backwards and forwards between your sunset scene and your sky scene. And for the sky I'm just going to grab, draw a nice big box around the scene. The actual view is this rectangle in the middle. I'm not going to worry about this black outline for the box because that's my limit for my scene. So I know that I'm never going to actually put the camera on that point. And I like to leave it there as a border so that I know anything outside this, you know, is not going to be seen. I'm just going to sort of pick a nice blue for the sky. It's only a temporary blue because later on we're going to make the sky look better than it is. But at the moment we're just going to focus on getting all of our elements into the scene. So I'm just going to use a flat colour. So we'll move on to the sun. You know the sun's just going to be a plain yellow. Make sure you name all of your patches. It makes it so much easier later on when you know what the names of everything are. So for the sun, I'm going to draw a circle. I'm going to use the shift. Here I just made a quick mistake. Can I just hit undo because I didn't mean to draw it in blue. I wanted to draw it in black. Use the shift to keep the circle round. And I'm just going to sort of pick a size that I like. I'm kind of picky, so I'm just going to make something that looks to be the right size to me. Now I'm just going to grab the centre of it, and we're going to delete the border because we have no need for a black border for our sun. And so now we've just got this plain yellow. And that's going to be our sun. Next we're going to make three hills. We're going to have a front hill, a middling hill and a distant hill. We're setting them up on separate layers, so later on if you want to use multiplane, they'll be perfectly set up to do it, and you'll be able to do multiplane whenever you want. By using multiplane, you'll be able to move the hills so that it's not a static background image. It's a really powerful feature of Animate and something that you'll want to do frequently. So I like to keep my scenes set up. Here I just used a name that wasn't allowed, so I'm going to pick one that is. And you want your distant hill to be on the bottom, your middling hill to be above it, and your front hill to be on the top. Again, this is for the layering. Toon Boom always shows the one that's on the top first. There is, a, is, there is an exception to this rule, and that's you can move things in the z-axis. And if you move something on the z-axis, then you can break these rules. But anything that's on the same value of the set, same value of the z-axis, the one that's on the top will be the one that's displayed first, and so the one behind gets cut by the one on the front. So again, I'm just going to use a box to draw. We're going to get, we're going to use a sort of a dark green for this. You see, I selected it. So that when I'm changing the texture here, it's going to affect the actual selection that I have. I'm going to pick a nice dark green that's almost black, but is a definite dark green. So with the tones, we're going to want um, three different tones. One for the back, one for the middle, one for the center. And here, I'm just editing my hill. I'm using the contour editor just to move the points and then you can use you just grab the line and move it up and down to get a curve if you're not keen on that you can use the bezier handles to edit your curve more accurately 
Also, if the, if the handles are pointing in both directions, you can use the Alt key to just move one of the handles. So back to now, I'm doing my three tones. I'm going to do all three tones now, even though we've only drawn the front heel. I like to use the highest numbers for the darkest tones because it just makes sense to me to have my dark tones as a higher number. And it's also easier for me to just make the lighter tones by just making each patch a little bit lighter. So I'm making the darkest patch first and then I'll make the middle one and make it a little bit lighter. Then I'll make the front one again and make it a little bit lighter. So our front hill will be the lightest and our back hill will be the darkest, which creates a little bit of a sense of depth to the scene, which is always good when you've got a flat scene. You like to try and create a little bit of depth. You know you're working in 2D, but that depth adds so much to your project than somebody who's just got a plain flat scene. So you don't have to go over the top and put shading and things like that in. You just need to try and create a little bit of depth. There I accidentally filled it with black. I just hit undo because I knew that it wasn't the colour I wanted and put the correct one in. You'll find yourself as you're using Toon Boom, you often make mistakes and you just instantly press undo because you're so used to doing it and it just takes you back to where you started. You'll find that the undo tool is the tool that you use the most of any tool in Toon Boom. You'll see that because I'm drawing the middling hill and it's further down, it's actually behind and you can only see part of it. That's the reason for the layering. I'm happy to work with it like this because I can see the perspective of how they're going to look with each other. But if it bothers you, you can just turn the front hill off so that you can't see it while you're putting on your second hill. But I find it's much easier when you've got when you can see how the hills are reacting with each other and I'm just trying to get something which I think will look decent here. And I'm going to paint it with my middle tone. So you can see it looks a little bit further back than the front hill. And then we just need to create our distant hill. And the distant hill is again going to be with our darkest tone. And you'll see that it's behind both of these hills because of the way the layers are ordered. Again, I just use the contour editor tool here to put things where I want. You'll see that I've got added some extension on both sides of the scene. This is so that when you do do some multiplayer and you, you've got some room to pan the camera left and right, you may want to extend the hills even further, but I've just left myself a little bit of room so that I do have room to pan left and right and to move the scene a little bit. In the second part of this video, we'll be adding a gradient to the sky, we'll be adding a gradient to the sun to make it not this solid blob in the sky and we'll probably add some shading when we do this when we do a sunset so the hills sort of are a bit darker at the front and you've sort of created this darkness of night coming effect so see you in part two